Welcome to Amazing You. My name is Dr. Rani Thanakudi. I am a clinical hypnotherapist, Mars Venus life and relationship coach, tarot reader, astrologer, life force compassion practitioner, past life regression practitioner, and a Mars Venus life and relationship coach. And today I have the greatest pleasure to introduce you to the very beautiful and wonderful lady from Canada. And her name is Tammy Williams. Tammy is a five times international best-selling author. She's also an entrepreneur with over 50, 15 years in marketing and sales. So welcome, Tammy, to Amazing You. Wow. Thank you so very much. Amazing you. I feel amazing just because of that. <laughs> so amazing you. That is powerful right there. Thank you so much. Dr. Rani, uh, it's only a short time I've known you, but when I see what you're posting is so therapeutic, it is speaking to the souls. So thank you for everything you're doing. You're awakening a village of people that you probably don't even know. So I want to say thank you. I feel so honored to be here. And I feel amazing. Thank you so much for your kind words, Tommy. It's been a, it is a great, great honor to have you. And I didn't know about these posts. I just keep doing them. And I just tell myself, I hope it touches somebody who might right. need that someday. So that's why I keep doing this, because I know at this time, so many people are having challenging times. And yes. that's the reason of the podcast as well. Yes. So it is really, really great so that you can share your wisdom and your knowledge to everybody today. So let's get started straight away, Tammy. Sure, sure. So Tammy, would you share with the audience briefly about your story? Whew. I hope you have so I hope you have some cleanups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's not too far away. <laughs> not too far away. Well, you know, very simple. I will tell you, just just, just imagine this. Mm -hmm. A woman who is six and a half months pregnant. Okay. And she's married a young, a young bride with okay. two children, six and five and a half around that age. Right. And she's not working. She doesn't have a job, but her job is to hold the home. Mm -hmm. Her husband goes to work. Yes. Like he does every day. Yeah. One day he left for work and two men showed up at the door in a suit. Mm. They told her that her husband was not going to be coming home. He lost his life Ooh. that day at work. Now, she had two children, six I, and five and a half years of age, and she was pregnant. I am so one sorry of, to hear that. One of the one of the children was me. Mm. I'm referring to my mom. Mm -hmm. So I talk about this because that is what propelled me into the spaces that I'm in. Yeah. And I'm a mom of three. Mm. I'm a wife. 25 years being married. Mm. And so... Just organically, what happened is that I started to have an affinity towards women because I seen the different things and challenges that my mom went through. Yeah. And I want to be a part of a solution for people yeah. who could see their way out. Yeah. Wow. That must have been really hard not only for your mom but for the children for you not knowing your dad you know yeah we had very little years with him yeah um and he was just out making a living in the mine and it was a nickel mine and um that was the reason why we moved to that town was wow. for work for him imagine that and she's pregnant you know with my baby brother and so you know it, it Gave me that passion to help women, and 
And what propelled me into going into business for myself, really, you know, Dr. Randy, was because I realized that I had a, a struggle, you know, working full time mm. and then being the mom who wanted to be the mom <laughs> because I realized what my mom had done with us, you know, and I think something inside me was always thinking something might happen. Something might happen. Right. Even though I was working, you know, because I know we, we have a lot of stuff we're carrying with us, yes. you know, and I used to feel guilty at the job. My kids are sick. Mm -hmm. um, they forgot their lunch in the backseat of the car. They forgot their mittens. The question always came up. Who's the backup? I am the backup. Even though I was married, I was the backup. I was the one who had to leave. So that kind of propelled me and pushed me into being entrepreneur. And I want people to know that not everyone is going into entrepreneurship to be millionaires no. and to, you know, have all this flash. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are organically being pushed into an area that can serve and feed our souls. Yeah. You know, that's that, that's that's how I end up going into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Right. And you were talking about that fear that you always had of what would happen. Did you, did entrepreneurs, becoming an entrepreneur help you to overcome that in some ways? In, in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it didn't happen right away for me to be an entrepreneur. But you know, you know your spirit and you know your energy. Yeah. And you know what's important to you. And I think believe the more I started to read and also be around other people, I started to realize, well, hey, she can do it. Yeah. Well, I can do it. Mm. He can do it. I can do it. Yes. You know, and that's what I started to get into my head. And I want to say like um sometimes it seems like it's so far to get that spot, you know, in your heart where you say, okay, now I'm gonna have to, you know, break that little bit of a chain that's going on here with me struggling with myself and all this thing. And it was still afraid. I'm very afraid. But you know what I realized, Dr. Rani? Mm. The power and the strength has come from me being afraid wow. and still going ahead anyways. Yes. You know, we drive our car every day. We don't know if we're going to get to A to B, yeah. but we still get in the car. It's mm -hmm. the same thing with our life. Yes. I think that's, you made a very important point because in life it's about taking risk. It's about getting out of our comfort zone. You know, yeah. it's very important to get out of our comfort zone so that we are able to discover our new talents, our the new things that are within us. Right. Yes. And you said that you, at some point you wanted to do what other people like. And it's okay because the same light that is in other people, it is in you too. So mm -hmm. God has given you that talent. God has given you all the tools or the powers. And it is about us discovering and going within and finding those treasures that have been here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And we all possess all the treasures, and but they are within us, up to us to discover them. It's like a puzzle for us yeah. to find out <laughs> as we go along on our life journey. We discover bit by bit about ourselves, you know? Right, right. Yeah, through our relationships, through our friendships, through our job, our family. Yeah, I think it's... Thank you for sharing that, Tammy. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And what has been for you, Tammy, the greatest challenge in your life? I know you said about the challenge of work, being a mom and working. Yeah. yeah. But what has been, ha, has there been any other greatest challenge in your life? Wow. There's a lot of challenges. You know, I, I must say going into entrepreneurship, I had to build up confidence in myself. Yeah. Uh, because it's not easy. Even when I was working at my last job where I became entrepreneur after, I was there for 14 years, mm. you know, and uh, because the the cost of living was increasing, being a mom of three, my husband was laid off several times throughout the time that we were married. And I realized that in sales and marketing, I could make a higher income if I went straight commission. Yes. So 
during some of my time working there, I went straight commission. And so it was a it was a transition from being the employee, which I loved, yes. getting my paycheck every two weeks, but then my life started to change. And so I went into straight commission at that same job. And then that's what helped me to get the confidence to realize that books think and grow rich. You know, there's that one chapter called specialized knowledge. Okay. And I know people, they think about saying, they don't understand a hundred percent. It's not about this kind of rich that people are always talking about. The rich is what you think rich is to you. Yes. And so for me, it was about having the time and being paid according to my worth mm. because I was seeing the sales that I was bringing in. And so I, I read that chapter and I said, wait a minute, I have a job. They're paying me a sound because of my specialized knowledge, but I can then do that on my own and companies will pay me as well because they're paying me as an employee. So maybe just do that. So that's what propelled me into the the whole thing about thinking that I could do it on top of seeing other people that were doing it. And so um, in the, the biggest challenge when you're referring to this to me is probably being a woman. Mm. I will say, of color, yeah. working in an industry of people that don't look like me. Yes. And that was the publishing space. Mm. And we know there's not a lot of people that look like us no. in that world. That's true. And so over the phone, I'm talking with you, having great experiences with you over the phone, always keeping in touch, emailing you. And then I go to the trade show. Right. And I'm saying, hi, Dr. Granny, how's it going at the show? How are you enjoying it? And you're looking at me and you're smiling. You recognize the wood, but you don't recognize the face. Mm. You're like, you know, you still want to talk to me because you're, and then I say, I'm Tammy. Yeah. I'm Tammy Williams. With some... And then they, oh. So a lot of challenges in that area. And it's mm. it's interesting because I know people don't want to believe this, but it does exist in terms of people being a little, oh, okay, that's you. Or they come outside and say, uh, Tammy Williams, and then you stand up <laughs> and they're not expecting it to be you. So I, I believe the biggest challenge for myself is to take that uniqueness mm. of being a black woman yeah. with knowledge in a space that is not typical for me to be in Yes, and dig deep. To myself and also I believe in God. I'm not sure if I can say that, but I will say that it's it's only because of faith that I still have this cheerful, you know, manner, you know, right now. Um, and realize that I can. And there's something that always stuck to me is my my job is to be the best and know that I'm capable of being the best at whatever it is I'm doing. Yeah. So, you know, knowing that has helped me to get to the next area, you know. Um Adding to the challenge there is a lot, a lot of challenges is like, you know, having a husband and you're losing a six figure plus salary being laid off, mm. not once, not twice, but three times mm. in the matter of 20 something, you know, us being married, he was at the same company for 25 years, mm. right? Straight out of high yeah. school. And he worked at the same company for 25 years and that's when he got laid off. So, you know, trying to manage our day-to-day -day life, yes, the family, and mm. then also the work situation, you know, that's what probably the biggest challenge, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to say anything small about um, growing up without my father, but my mom was filled with so much love. And we had a, a, a community of people that helped us. So even though I lost my dad at a young age, mm -hmm. she had so much to give us and all of our family. And she had God and she had this and she had that and she had her own affirmation. She had her own, you know what I mean? So it just kind of, it didn't, it didn't always feel, you know, that bad, even though it was. Yeah. You know, she, she was, she had a way to make things lighter. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I, I can go on about challenges, you know, like every day is a challenge. <laughs> I'm just laughing right now because I'm like, someone just told me something that happened to them. And I was like, okay, yeah, that that's not really a challenge, <laughs> but to that person it is. 
I know for my family, we do not get the fruits and vegetables we need because we are so busy and we are constantly trying to do what's convenient and easy. And so that's where Juice Plus has really come in and helped our family. It's a great way to get more fruits and vegetables and you could look at it as a healthy fast food option. Now we have our complete smoothie that takes maybe five minutes to make in the morning. And it's nutrition on the go and now we have the bars, which is even better. And the tower garden where I can eat my fruits and vegetables off my patio. Fresh. I use everything that belongs to Juice Plus. I love the trio, the orchard garden and vineyard capsules because that's my insurance policy. I have two smoothies every single day and to the smoothies I add my trio blend of vineyard and garden and orchard. I use gummies for a healthy snack and I have a tower garden so I can grow good health on my deck as well. Whether you love Juice Plus, whether you love tower gardens, whether you love the complete, you have something for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or if you're 99. Your body knows good stuff. Juice Plus surpasses that. It goes beyond just the capsules or beyond the chewables. It goes beyond complete. It really has to do with what kind of food are you eating and discovering what does health mean to me. The Juice Plus products are just a doorway to people creating a healthier lifestyle and making it easy for people to get on the road to healthier living. <laughs> I think you made some, you shared some really interesting points about the challenges you face throughout your life. And mm -hmm. I would say challenges in life will come, mm -hmm. you know, but it comes to help us to strengthen us, to help us to really look deeper at ourselves and find right. our, our potentials. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we, we don't grow until we face challenges. I have experienced that and you know that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's when we have to really stand up and stand up for ourselves, for who we are. Yes. Really put in the effort, get out of our comfort zone. So, mm -hmm. so many people think, oh, when challenges come, that's it. It's They feel defeated. But challenges are here to help us grow and become a better version of ourselves. Right, yeah. right. And I really very much like when you also shared about your mom, when you said that this didn't impact so much on you, not having a dad, because your mom had so much love to give. So you had that deep connection with her, that loving connection. But in addition of that, what helped you is having a community of family to help you. you yes. Know? connection is so so important and mostly mm -hmm. at this time mm -hmm. where we are so connected to our mobile and to our tv and netflix <laughs> yeah you are, do you yeah if you forget your cell phone at home you go back and get it absolutely we forget ourselves we are so connected with everything outside of us that we forget about ourselves and we forget about the community people are so disconnected with the yeah. people around them so i think that is very beautiful and that has helped you. I think it's beautiful to have highlighted that, Tammy, how important is the power of connection. Yes. You know? And uh, I think that's that's wonderful. And you also talk about something that you said about the challenges you face as an author because you are not one-time author, you are five-time a best-selling author and you know the challenges you face in that world of publishing, you definitely know. So being a woman of color, like you said, it's it's not an easy place to be in the publishing area because there are not many women of color in, who have published, not many, but there are more and more nowadays. More and more nowadays, yeah. Yeah, but at the time that you started, I believe there were very few, there were very few. So you are really a role model Tommy, for all these women, you know, for all of us, because you are here, you are like a pioneer for all of us. <laughs> well, you know, I, I have to let you know that um, the 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 co-authorship international award winning author came later in life. Yeah. You know, that's been over this COVID time. And I, you know, I don't like to give energy to that, but I do. I'm sorry I said that. But um, 
I'm not giving it that energy. Just take that back. But what's happened over the past three to five years, but um, working in the publishing space as an associate publisher and then becoming a publisher for a magazine, trade magazine, wow. that's that's the big part of being someone that looks like me when you know the type of people that are working in the field mm. and substations and motors and drives and keeping our infrastructure. There's not a lot of people that look like you and I. Yeah. You know, I could have been at a trade show and there'd be like maybe 10 of us that were visible minorities, you know, at these mm-hmm. trade shows. So um, in that respect, for sure, definitely for sure. I agree with you 100 percent about um, the, the the challenges have helped me to grow. Mm-hmm. And some people just want to give up. They think, yes. OK, I'm not supposed to do this anymore. <laughs> That's why people are like divorcing so quickly. There's a problem there. Yeah. You know, they give up. That's not, no, and you're not supposed to do it. Maybe you do, but maybe you have to think about that, you know? Yeah. But it shows also the power of determination within you, mm-hmm. that you believe in God, the faith that you had. Mm-hmm. So every time you fall down, you get up and you rise up again and you try again. You know, it's not about, it's not about falling. It's about how many times you get up and try again. Right, right. I started to call myself the comeback kid. Yes. I think Les Brown said that it doesn't matter how much you fall, but it's about, it's always a comeback. Right. Right. Something like that. Yeah. And what has all these challenges, Tammy, taught you about yourself? It taught me Mm. that I'm stronger than I think. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there's a feminine side to me, of course, because I'm a lady. So I have feelings too. Yes. You know, um, my children are watching me, though, you know, so I'm and I'm the event planner in our household. You know, I'm I'm the comedian in our household. I'm the one that, you know, let's do this. We're doing this. So they're watching me. But I do allow myself to sit back and relax. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to say that the the time that I spend with myself mm. has helped to ground me. OK. And I do believe in self-care yes. you know I have a to-do list and I was never putting myself on that list mm. and then I realized nothing can get done without me so I better start putting myself on that list so I have things that I do to feed myself you know yes um yeah I I don't know if I'm answering the question uh properly but um yeah tell me if I'm rambling on or not but I'm enjoying our conversation so as we're talking things are going through my head <laughs> but that's okay so it is a conversation that we are having you know Tommy <laughs> and I think it's important point that you made that you said you give yourself that space that time yeah you know to look after yourself so can you tell us what are some of the things that you do that can help the audience? Because so many people at this time, Tommy, they tell me at this time, they don't want to do any, they, they don't want to invest in themselves. They have, mm. to, you know, we, at this time, people are so trying to make money, find a job that they don't spend time on investing in themselves. So what is it that you do in investing in yourself that could help them because you know investing is in yourself is the best investment that we can ever make you know it is it is so tell us about how do you invest in yourself well retraining my mind everything's about mindset yes and so because i have a busy house i mean i still make my husband's lunch <laughs> okay and three kids and the youngest is 13 the older the others are older but you're always a mom when they live under your roof right even when they move so it's different when they're under the same roof with you but the best thing I have done for myself is I'm a pen and paper person and I do like agendas so on that agenda of some of the things I want to do and I had to kind of force myself to do this because I would put down I have five people to call Okay. This person I have to get back to you, mm-hmm. appointment to make for the kids, you know, and these kind of things I have to take care of that are personal stuff. But I never put myself on there. Wow. So I started to have my agenda and put down 15 minutes, me, mm. 15 minutes, me. And I was doing it in like increments so that it ended up endorphing into an hour or two that I was spending on myself, but not all at the same time because the phone's ringing, the door's ringing, you know, uh, 
the 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 stove is going, the microwave is beeping, all these different things. Yes. And then someone is calling you. Now you have to get on a Zoom. So where do I fit in there? So mm-hmm. I knew I don't have two hours unless everyone's sleeping. <laughs> and I know the importance of sleep now. I didn't know that before, how important it is. So I started to put that down. So what has helped me that I've been sharing with other ladies is yeah. to put themselves in an agenda. And even if you're not an agenda person, start mm-hmm. having an agenda or a to-do list and make sure you're putting down there because what's going to happen organically, you're going to say, I did this, I did the laundry. I called this one, I mailed out this, I paid this bill, I did this email. And right beside you, where it says me time, there's nothing because you didn't do it. Yeah. So what starts to happen is we start to build a muscle. Yes. For saying, I need this time. Mm. It's 10 p.m. or 9 a.m. or 11.30. I booked the time for myself. How come I didn't do it? And we start to make ourselves, our very selves accountable to ourselves. Yeah. Also, too, what has helped is finding the stuff that I like. And I think it's really important. There's a lot of different books you can read. And they say, yeah, your surroundings play a big part in how you feel. Yes. In terms of your worth and yeah. also in terms of the energy that you're going to have. Dave. Look, you can stub your toe or you can hit your elbow or, you know, break a button or something. But that's not supposed to ruin your day. No. The weather is going to be bad. That's yeah. not supposed to change your attitude. So I have, fav- my favorite color is pink. Right. <laughs> so I, have of, I have lots of pink flowers. My desk is pink with some papers I put on it. It's not, it's not, it's an old pink, but I actually put some pink papers on it and recovered it. I've got pink this, I've got everything pink here. Pink, pink, pink. It makes me smile and okay. it makes me happy. So I sit in my space here. I even have a little small pink Christmas tree. I keep up all year long. Aww. It gives me some good feelings. So yes, I have, I have lots of bad times throughout the day, but I just sit here and look at all my pink flowers. Mm. And so that actually helps me to breathe. Yes. Surround yourself with things that you like and also um, find out what you like. I, I like to go by the lake. So I go down to the walk to the lake and I, I, it's not close to my home. Yes. I might have to drive there, but that's my me time. Yes. Wow. I think this is really such an important suggestion that you shared to all of us because we are all so busy and finding two hours, like you said, it's not, it's not possible for most, most people. And I think that's really, really lovely that you said to put it in the agenda, in the do, to-do list, your prior, prioritize yourself within that 24 hours throughout the day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. That is so beautiful and I think so important to all of us at this time because we can find ourselves doing one thing to end up from another Mm -hmm. and nonstop doing things. Yeah. Yes. Or just doing nothing. Absolutely. Nothing that's feeding our soul. Like I play the music here and dance around. I have plants. So I always tell my kids that the plants need music, turn it on. Yes. (laughs) You know, And, and it's just interesting how. Small little things like that can adjust your mood and then realize, you know, this feels good. Yeah, that's true. I know that time flies. So we have a, f- I will ask you a few more things to get to know you. And I want to ask you today, what would you say to encourage people who are facing some tough times? What would you like to tell them, tell me? Probably. A small couple of sentences is to know that Mm -hmm. they're made for more. Okay. And that more means whatever that means to them. Mm. And I say more because we sometimes don't realize we're just here. And sometimes we think that's just it. Mm -hmm. But we're made for more, you know, than just being here. And I would also say is get comfortable with saying no Mm. and setting boundaries. You know, some of our closest people have a negative energy. Yes. It's okay to be with those people, but we have to dial it down a bit. Yes. (laughs) And maybe we spend less time with those people because, you know, every time you talk to them, they're like giving you all the bad news, everything that happened on the media, what happened out there in the street. 
and it's not feeding your soul. It's actually depleting you because we already know, everyone knows this, a positive thought can't live in the same space as a, as a negative thought. Yeah. So if you if you continue to have negative thoughts, the positive thought can't even show up. Mm. So we have to do that, setting boundaries and saying no, and be okay with saying no, but just know what you're saying no to. Yes. No, that's, and, and, and in saying that with setting boundaries, be open to people. You know, I, I do some things that people don't often think about, like, why would she do that? You know, I could see you on the street and say, you know, your hair looks so nice and shiny, healthy. It looks real. You can look at me like, what's wrong with this person? Is she crazy? You know, or I could be on seeing you on social media and comment on some of your posts and giving a compliment. We have to get used to complimenting people. Yes. Because there's a lot of people that don't get that. And it's OK if they don't receive it, but still do it because there's a good feeling. It's almost like giving someone a gift. You know how you feel so happy when someone you give a gift and they love it? It's the same thing with that. And I feel that that opens up so much to us. And we need a community of people who are like-minded. Absolutely. It's a big deal right now because I believe uh, collaboration. Mm, yes. Is we have businesses and people who are seeing the importance of that. They're not even thinking about competing against it. They do the same thing and they're collaborating. We have to take a look at what's working with these other companies and businesses and realize we can't do anything on our own at all. Yes. No man is an island, you know? That's yes, why we I are, love that quote. We are born to live in community. We are born for connection. Right. Yes. So we have to build that connection back again. Now that we are out of the pandemic, we have to, because that's how we thrive in community right. in connection. Yes. Right. So thank you so much, Tammy. And tell us briefly about the great things that you do, about your books and about your businesses and how can people reach out to Tammy? Well, the best way to reach me is through Facebook. I do have a LinkedIn as well. Yes. But um, what I really do from the marketing side of things is I help people who are transitioning to doing social media and online marketing for their business, their services, whatever they offer. And I assess websites to help people monetize on their websites. Okay. I've taken that knowledge from that publishing space and brought it over to this area and assess people's social media accounts and their 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 actual um, port, uh, profiles. Mm -hmm. And of course, my affinity for women. I'm the founder of Women Champagne and Real Estate. It's a group where we can see other women doing what we want to do or we're thinking of doing or we're already doing and learn from. It's a safe space for you to see people buying their first property Maybe um, there's people that are coaching people on how they can build up wealth with that. Or we have people who are just new to the space and want to know, be around people and they can just be someone that's close as opposed to watching a video. You know, I see Dr. Rani and Wani is showing me that she just bought two properties. It's like a dream for me to think that I can do that. But now I'm seeing you doing it. So that can empower me. Mm. Right. And then also um, my crypto smart chicks. Because of we know already, Dr. Rani, we have been behind with everything to do with finances. Yes. And so it doesn't matter to participate. It's just a matter of knowing and having the knowledge. Mm. Right. And I'm gonna also the advisory board member for Cameras for Girls, okay. which is an amazing charity. And they also, too, are big on the inequities. Imagine you living in a country and now they only look at you as a baby making machine. Mm. The lady who has the vision behind this want to change that. Right. Giving them the skills as a photographer. Yeah. So if they choose, they can have a skill that they can actually now get an income from. If they choose, we're just trying to give people choices and options. Absolutely. Wow. That keeps you really busy. And <laughs> and I do appreciate the time that you are you gave to the audience your Thank precious you. time. I'm Thank really you. grateful, Tammy, for the time that you shared with us, that you spoke to the audience, and I would say a big thank you. And I wish you a lot of success in the future and in everything that you do. And it's been an honor to have you on the YouTube and the podcast today. And I would like to also thank the audience who's been so faithful, who's been watching, subscribing, and sharing. So thank you, everybody, for 
spending your time with Tammy today and hope you got something that you can apply in your life and wish you all very a great weekend and we'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.